Right, we're going to have a look at this, um, and this is an American Sheridan Blue Streak uh, air rifle. Uh, this is a probably a 60s uh, version, and uh, you can tell that um, by a few little things that I'll come to in a minute. But first, quick overview with these. So, these were probably, when I was a lad, considered the Rolls-Royce of pneumatic air rifles, pump-ups. Um, and definitely considered the Rolls-Royce of American air rifles. Because at the time, American air rifles really were held, uh, probably in the UK, as not really very good. Um, a lot of plastic... Uh, plastic stocks, plastic actions, and not really uh, the nicest of rifles to shoot. The triggers were always awful. And I think the reason for that is because firearms are so easy to get all of in the States, um, and the licensing system there was so much easier, um, that really the starter rifle for uh, youths and teenagers and used for small game and vermin shooting was probably going to be a 2-2 uh, rimfire. And in all fairness, you could buy a really nice quality 2-2 rimfire, even in the UK, and you still can, um, for half the price of a PCP air rifle. And back then, it was probably the same then as well. For what you could buy a top quality European Springer, you could buy a really, really nice, smart, walnut stocked, beautifully finished 2-2 rimfire so really there was no point in the Americans making or manufacturing um, top end or high powered air rifles it was pointless because the market was flooded with firearms so they tended to go for rifles that were more geared towards really young children um, like the daisies and stuff like that hence the plastic stocks stuff like that they were a cheap cheerful little commodity that young kids would use before they went on to uh, firearms and because of that they didn't do too well in Europe where really air rifles were probably more a lot more mainstream as an adult weapon um, and adults required that little bit more finesse in the trigger and a better build quality having said all that the Sheridan was actually a really nice rifle now I remember seeing one of these when I was a kid uh, a mate of mine bought the uh, the Silver Streak, which is exactly the same as this rifle, but it had a, a nickel-plated um, action. And these were these were the Rolls Royce of the pump-up world. These were about the best pump-ups you could get, possibly edged out slightly when the Sharp and Overs arrived, even though the Sharps were quite an ugly little rifle. Um, they were uh, really well put together. This walnut stock, nice walnut stock as well, pretty good configuration on it. Nice uh, nice bit of graining in the walnut. So they came with a nice walnut stock. The trigger, whilst very, very basic by European standards, um, non-adjustable or anything, um, because it was only releasing a PC, uh, um, a pump up, as opposed to holding back the power in a pent up spring, um, the trigger wasn't too bad, actually. Um, so the trigger was actually quite good on uh, on the Sheridans. And this one's actually quite a good trigger, to be fair. It's creep-free, relatively light, let off, uh, and very predictable. So it's quite nice. The sights are a tad basic, probably, for the period. By now, you, most European air rifles had considerably more complicated sights. But nonetheless, this is still adjustable for height and windage. You adjust it by windage by loosening off one of these screws and tightening up the other one. It drifts across. Uh, and the elevation is a straightforward screw. Blade foresight. And the barrels were rifled and made out of brass, I think they were. I think they were brass or bronze, one or the other. They weren't steel anyway. Uh, this is an earlier version of the Blue Streak, so it's got the shinier uh, finish to the barrel and to the cylinder. Later ones had a sort of matte Parkerized type finish on them. 
Um, and there's a couple of ways of telling whether yours is pre-1970s. Um, and one of the ways is the later ones had a slightly longer barrel that came flush with the end cap here. Uh, whereas the early ones didn't, had a slightly shorter barrel like this one. Uh, the later ones also had a, uh, a serial number stamped on the cylinder. After 1972, they had a serial number stamped on the cylinder, whereas the early ones didn't. And the other giveaway is that the later ones, whereas this one has a flat-topped uh, receiver with these grooves in, the later ones had a smooth, sort of rounded receiver. Uh, there were none of these grooves, it was just rounded. It didn't have a flat top or these grooves, it was just rounded off. So that's how you can tell whether you've got a later or a slightly earlier one. Other than that, not a lot really changed. On the really later ones, the forend also, whereas this forend runs pretty flush um, and is the same diameter really as the body, on the much later rifles, this became much fatter. Uh, and on some of them, it was actually slightly tapered at the end, in towards the end here. But it became much fatter to give a bigger grip for the pumping. So this runs off between two and eight pumps. Um, and to be fair, once you get up to four pumps, the difference between four and eight pumps isn't huge. Uh, it goes from something like about eight and a half foot pounds at four pumps up to just under 11 uh, on eight. So it doesn't really go up a great deal once you go above four pumps. Um, Eight is the maximum. Um, bolt action, very straightforward. Just pull the bolt back to cock it. And then pellet goes in there in the groove. Slide it forward. And that's it, you're ready to go. It's got a safety catch on the back that slides across. Um, like that. So you just push it down. It's safe. And fire. Dead straightforward. Nothing to it. Dead easy to use, fairly quiet. The really, really early versions of this rifle, the ones made in the uh, early 50s, very late 40s, had a safety catch that was built into the back here. And from what I can remember, I think you used to have to keep your thumb on it to actually get the rifle to fire. So you had to shoot it in a thumb up position and keep your thumb on the, uh, on the safety catch to fire it. Uh, there was no facilities um, for scopes on the actual rifle itself but you could buy a little intermount system um, which is two little clamps that fitted over the barrel and against the cylinder and you could put your scope uh, mounts on those um, and the other thing with the Sheridans is of course they were all 0.20 cal they did I think a very 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 limited number of 2.2s right at the end of the life of these rifles but 99.99% um, of them were 0 0.20 cal, um, which is what the Sheridan became famous for. And being one of the first 0 0.20 caliber air rifles. And that's another reason it didn't sell particularly well in the UK, because at the time the range of 0 0.20 caliber ammunition was very, very limited. Indeed, it's not particularly great at the moment. Back then, 70s, 80s, 2 cal was fairly scarce. And I'll just show you some of the Sheridan 2 cal pellets. Sheridan 2 cal pellets came in these yellow plastic containers. Um, really nice container, actually. Sheridan 5mm cal ammunition, contents 500 rounds, picked out in uh, raised. I'll show you one of the pellets. There's a little dispenser here that you could use. You could flick that up to empty them out. And the pellets are a really unusual shape. I'll get one out. I'll show you. See? It's like a dustbin. Quite a deep, hollow base. Cylindrical with a slight... Uh, very slight lip on it and a sort of set back 
domed head. Um, it's got to be said that these pellets are not especially good. This rifle's not particularly accurate with those pellets. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not particularly good. And uh, it shoots much better with 0.20 Cal GSBs or H&Ns. Um, much better with a, a normal 20 Cal Diablo pellet. Uh, though it does hit really, really hard with those Sheridan pellets. Um, all in all, yeah, it's a really nice rifle, actually. It's very well made. Um, you know, you think this gun was made in the late 60s. Still works really well. Takes eight, eight pumps easily, holds its air. They're not especially difficult to pump up, either. Um... Not as difficult as some, not nowhere near as difficult to pump up to full power as a sharp. Um, they were a bit of a nightmare. Woodwork's quite nice on this. Um, this one's like a sort of semi, it's not a high gloss finish, it's like a semi gloss satiny finish I suppose. Nice bit of woodwork on it. Some nice grain on it. Very slender stock. Um, and it's only a short rifle and it just weighs just over five pounds. And it's just over, I think it's about 30 odd inches long, so it's fairly short as well. So it's nice and compact, nice and lightweight. Very quick to bring up to the shoulder. Um, and yeah, all round, it's actually a very nice gun and still a usable gun. You know, still usable, still quite nicely made. It's lasted well. So there it is, Sheridan Blue Streak. An early one from probably the, the 60s um, and in very nice condition, very nice condition. These aren't an especially expensive um, collectible air rifle either. They're still not especially dear to buy. Um, in fact, they're fairly cheap really, fairly affordable to buy really. Especially for a rifle that you can actually, if you get a good one that's still got good seals, that you can actually still hunt with. Um, you know, because this one here is delivering just under 11 foot-pounds. Um, its accuracy is pretty damn good. You know, especially when I've been shooting it just with open sights, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's not very good with these pellets, I must admit. But with the JSBs, I had some JSB 2 Cal pellets, uh, and it wasn't too bad at all with those. So it's, it's uh, yeah. But I have no doubt that they will increase in value as time goes on. You don't see many around, that's the thing. Especially not in the UK. You don't see many of these in the UK, because they never sold very well. Like I say, there was a few problems. The perceived quality of American air rifles put people off um, because the market was flooded with Crossmans and Daisies that really were very, very low quality. Um, very, very cheap. More like kids' toys, really, than anything. Um, and there was only this really around at the time that was um, possibly some Benjamins, but they were even scarcer, uh, that were anything like geared up to being a, a sort of full-powered, decent hunting rifle. Um, and these didn't sell very well, A, because of that perceived um, lower build quality, and B, the calibre as well put a lot of people off. 2 Cal put lots of people off buying these rifles, because the pellets were hard to get hold of. They had a very, very limited number of manufacturers selling .20 Cal ammo, so they didn't sell well. Consequently, in the UK, there aren't very many of them. Um, so if you find one, um, they're well worth adding to your collection. Because I think these will only grow in value 